All right, so I'm going to talk about God's love this evening. Um, <clears throat> oh, for the uh, closing prayer, if we could remember Tina and Elijah, they're driving up here. Thanks. Um, I want to talk about God's love this evening. I think it's easy for us to sometimes maybe forget uh, how much God cares and loves each of us. You know, when we're going through all these difficult things in life, um, and we're going through those moments in time, and we're full of worry and anxiety, I think sometimes we fail to recognize how much he really does care about us. Um, and I think sometimes we forget how blessed we really are, you know? That song, Count Your Blessings, Name Them One by One, and you'll see what God has done. That, that really holds a lot of value, because it's, it's easy to dismiss all of the good things that we have in our life um, when something that's difficult happens. When we think about God caring for us, it's important to consider, I think, how much he really does pay attention to us and our life, how much he's looking over us. And there's one particular passage that I think of uh, pretty often when I think about how intently God is looking out and looking at us, and that's from uh, Matthew 10, 29 through 31. It says, Are not two sparrows sold for a cent? And yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So do not fear, you are more valuable than many sparrows. So God, he knows and understands, sees everything that happens to us. He always sees us. He knows about everything. And even if we lose a hair off of our head, and he has seen many fall from mine, but <laughs> he knows about it, right? He knows what we're going through. He knows what we're, what we're de dealing with, what's troubling us, what's bothering us. And, and furthermore, uh, Jesus says that you're valuable. You're a precious. Uh, you're a precious to God. Um, Valuable, more valuable than many sparrows. Well, thank, thankful, thankful for that. Um, but what is, what is that exact number? What is many sparrows? Well, it's hard to say for certain, but I think this, the scriptures do give us some pretty good insights uh, that tell us how valuable uh, we really are to God and how much he dutifully cares for us. And I want to look at some of those insights uh, this evening. So that we, that we remember that no matter what we are going through or dealing with, that God is always present. He is always there. He is in our corner. He is wanting us to get through whatever it is that we're dealing with. He wants us to overcome and come to him. So to begin this dive into how much we mean to God, I think we should go back to the Old Testament. We can go all the way back to Adam and Eve and see how God made people special. If we look at Genesis 1.26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky, over the cattle and over the, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God gave us dominion over every other living thing, all the animals, right? Every living creature that dwells in the earth is subject to the, to the authority of men who is subject to the authority of God. Beyond just being over all these creatures, people also stand apart because they are made in the likeness, in the image of God. God made us unique. He made us special in an amazing way. We are a reflection of God's own uniqueness. Because God has blessed us and made us in his image, we have become great in the earth, right? Look at how much people have accomplished because they are made in God's image. From our great cities to our technology to the monuments of architecture to the beauty of art and the wonders of science, God has made humanity capable of amazing and wonderful things because of the blessings that God gives us, the blessing of being in his own image. We are anything but ordinary. God made us extraordinary, each of us, in our own particular way. We all have strengths and weaknesses, and we complicate, complement and fortify each other. 
Uh, we come together in amazing displays of ingenuity and accomplishment. God has made us special because he made us in his image. And that in and of itself is an amazing and wonderful blessing that he touched us with himself. I'm amazed when I think about how quickly uh, the United States, they responded uh, to, the, to the crisis of this last pandemic, you know. They, they created a vaccine in less than a few months, and then it was ready for distribution and started to be, three of them, started to be given out within 10 months of the lockdowns and the pandemic happening and everything else. Um, it is truly amazing the minds and abilities that God gives us. I, th I think it's, it's unbelievable. You just think about electricity, um, building these structures, the, <laughs> everything that we can do because God allows it, because God has made us so that we can. And that is an, a wonderful, awesome blessing. I mean, just think about it. You know, if you were a fish, you'd be a lot more subject to all the things that were around you. Or if you were a deer, you could be eaten by something but we're so much more than anything else. It's an amazing thing that we are blessed by God. And beyond all these things, uh, beyond all of them, um, God also chose to give us free will, to choose Him. He didn't make us and program us so that we would have to follow Him with everything that we did. He gave us the ability to choose Him and love Him for ourselves. And unfortunately, a great many of us choose ourselves instead of God all too often, don't we? We often choose to enrich ourselves at the expense of others. We are greedy and hypocrites and haters and revilers, and all of us have been wicked at times in our life. We have all been selfish um, instead of loving people and following uh, the example and the image of God. All of us at some point have rejected God by doing these things. The God who loves us and made us in his image. We rejected his power, his might, his majesty, and all the earth. The creator of the universe. We reject his lordship in favor of things that we, don't, we desire for ourselves. Scriptures tell us that all of us, at one point or another, have rejected God. We have not loved God the way that we should. We have not shown him the care and the, the thought and the tenderness and the, and, and the dedication that he has shown us. Because God has always been faithful to us, but we have not always been faithful to him. If you look at um, Romans 3, 10 through 12, it says, As it is written, there is none righteous, not even one, there is none who understands, there is none who seeks for God. God always seeks for us. He knows about every hair that's on our head, doesn't he? But so many of us at some point have not sought God. All of us have turned aside together. They have become useless. There is none who does good. There is not even one. None righteous, none that understand God. None who seek for God. None, not one good. You know, God, He lovingly created us in His image. And when given the choice of good over evil, every one of us at some point in our lives has chosen evil, has chosen the wrong thing. Every one of us has sinned, right? If we look in Romans 2, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And other people may not know about our sins. You know, plenty of us have these secret sins, we might want to call them, ones that are not necessarily visible to people, but God knows all the same. He knows if a hair comes out of our head, he certainly knows when we're doing something that we shouldn't be doing. And you would think that because we have all let God down, because we've all betrayed him and rejected him in some way, because we all failed him, that like some busted experiment, we'd just be wiped off the face of the earth, removed from existence. But he doesn't do that, does he? He preserved us. He kept us. First through Noah in a physical sense, and then later through his son, Jesus Christ. 
in an eternal and spiritual sense because he loves us. He cares for us. He wants us to be around. God still loves us and he wants us to flourish in spite of all of our betrayals and in spite of all of our failings towards him, in spite of all the times when we've made mistakes. Uh, Paul says in Romans 5, 6-8, it says, For while we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, while we yet rejected him, Christ died for us. It really is powerful when we think about how much God really does love us in spite of all of our guilt that we carry, all of our shame, in spite of our wicked thoughts and hurtful and sinful actions, our mistakes. God, through His Son, Jesus Christ, died for us. Us who are ungodly. The evil, the sinners of this world. So even though... We were damaged and broken. Jesus came and picked up the pieces and he put us back together, didn't he? He put us together, he renewed us, he refreshed us, and he took away our sins, allowing us to be with the Father. And he let, God let Jesus take all of our guilt, all of our sin, all of our shame upon himself. He wiped it all away. So how much does God love us? He loves us enough to die for us, to give us another opportunity to make a right choice, to start living our lives the way that we were meant to live them, to live our lives based on the image that he put within us of himself, to live according to the image of God, You know, I I do think it is amazing that God loves us, us, His creation, so much. We are but dust formed into men and blown into with life, right? There's not a lot to us. I think if you, you cook us down into our basic ingredients, we're not worth very much. And who are we compared to God who made us? Think about the difference. How good and wonderful is it to remember how much you are loved and cherished by such a powerful and amazing God, the one who created all the things around us and created the entire universe. When I think about how God formed the sun, this ball of fire that is 27 million degrees Fahrenheit, that has this gravitational pull that holds all the planets together. And that he cares about you. And he cares about every little hair on your head. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that cool? Think about what he did. He made the universe. And he knows you. He remembers you. He loves you. He made you in his image. You are special to God. Every one of us. And although we sin, God loved us anyway and still sent Jesus, his son, to die for those sins so that we could be with him, so that we could have another opportunity to succeed. I think it's important to remember that no matter what you're going through in your life, that God is pulling with you, pulling for you. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be with him. And he has done so much to make that happen. And he has done all the work. He's paved the road. And you know, it's up to us just to walk on that road. And he doesn't just make us walk alone. He's always with us. And you know, when we're going through hard times, when we're going through things that are really difficult for us to deal with, we should remember to pray. We should remember to reach out to God. You know, Peter said in uh, 1 Peter 5, 6 through 7, he says, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your anxiety on him because he prays, because he cares for you. So we need to pray to God. 
Let them know about what's on our heart. Let them know about what we're dealing with. God is listening. God is listening. He knows about every hair on your head and He hears every word in your voice. So are you willing to follow Him? Are you willing to walk in His narrow way? Will you choose God and follow the path that He has set down before you? The path that He has lovingly made through great sacrifice, even the sacrifice of His Son Jesus Christ. Will you leave behind the old and bitter ways that lead to shame, anxiety, and grief and instead walk with hope and walk in the light of God? You have a choice. And you can start that journey today if you haven't started walking on it. You begin by believing in Him in all that God has done for you. Believing in His Son, Jesus Christ, that He died for you. It says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. So you have a choice. Are you willing to change your heart and your mind and give it to God? Your heart, your mind, your soul. Are you willing to accept Jesus? And if you're willing to believe and repent, are you willing to give a commitment to Him and be baptized and follow Him into newness of life? Well, if you are, then God will forgive your sins. He will give you the gift of His Holy Spirit. And you will be with Him in heaven. If that's on your heart, something that you want to do today that you have not yet done, I want to encourage you to come forward as we stand and sing.